audience or on the stage. It just really helps uh, with the sound quality as we uh, venture into this techno space here this evening. Uh, please do use the chat box. I see uh, a lot of the folk are already chatting on the chat box. Uh, we will take some questions there and whatever we can answer in the latter part of the session. Uh, we hope to answer as many questions as possible. Grab a cup of coffee or a drink. Uh, you do know the Zoom tools at the top of the screen uh, for the new folk in the room. Uh, if you want to just click on the stage controls at the top of, sorry, if you just click on the screen zoom at the top of your own screen, uh, there's a drop down box and you can choose whichever screen you want to look at. You can zoom in on the panelists, etc. Uh, so please do so. So that's a little bit of the protocol over. A warm welcome from Africa and specifically South Africa. We're right on the southern tip of Africa and a beautiful country, 60 million people, 48,000 agents, 5.3 trillion rands worth of property sales on an annual basis. And it's just so wonderful to be part of this EXP experience and part of the EXP Realty team. We are the first of five new countries uh, to be launched and uh, the other five countries, India, Mexico, Portugal, and France uh, before the end of the year. And welcome to our colleagues from those countries as well. Thanks very much to Michael Valdez, Megan Kelly, who've really set the plat platform for our South African team as we go global and uh, extend into the rest of the world. To my team here this evening, Mark Luca, Amanda Ray, Juliet Zuniga, Robin Nell, Zayan Mayer, Nyaro Mubaya. We're the Super 7, we're from South Africa, and we're here to support you. My name's Andrew Thompson, I'm your host for this evening, and I'm the broker of record for South Africa. Some really exciting times lie ahead, and uh, our audience and all the agents building their own networks in South Africa, thank you so very much. It has been uh, really tremendous support that we've seen out of the USA, out of the UK, out of Canada and Australia. Thanks very much to those teams. From our team, just very quickly to Glenn, Jason, Michael and uh, the EXP World Holdings leadership. Uh, I don't think we'd be here today without this incredible leadership without this incredible vision and the mindset of EXP Realty that we've got uh, amongst us. Uh, an incredible welcome into, um, uh, into EXP World. And uh, certainly I just wanna say this has given us real exposure to a different type of world. The differentiator in EXP to me is uh, the agents, our shareholders, uh, the leadership team with their uh, vision and mindset. So our panel tonight, and without further ado, a uh, very warm welcome. I'll just mention them by name before I invite them up onto the stage. Uh, but uh, welcome to Steve Johnson. Uh, Steve's going to be chatting a little bit about training. I'll ask him a whole host of questions around leadership, vision, and mindset. Uh, but it's a great pleasure to have Steve, Steve in our team. Uh, he was one of the first agents to sign on here in South Africa. And uh, he's got a whole host of experience uh, in the training field, but I certainly believe that Steve's going to be possibly the future Brent Gove of Africa and certainly the future Brent Gove of South Africa. So welcome to Steve Johnson. Uh, we've also got Lance Klusner. Uh, Lance Klusner, one of the best sp sports people I've ever watched uh, on South African and international soil, a fantastic cricketer, an incredible pinch hitter, one of the best batsmen I've ever watched a man who could accumulate runs in literally seconds, overs, and win matches, not only for South Africa, but the many teams that he represented around the world. Uh, very warm welcome to Lance. Great to have you here. And I think an announcement worth mentioning is uh, Lance has decided to join us. He's going through the join app process, and effectively, he's going to be an agent based here in South Africa, but extending the message of EXP Realty not only across South Africa, but across the world in the networks and the people that he meets. And he's going to truly be an ambassador for EXP South Africa and EXP Realty. We excited about that. Very warm welcome to Lance and his lovely lady, Laura, as well. Lovely to have you as part of the team. And then amazing, Brent Gove. Uh, he did a chat with us last night. Uh, Brent is in the room. 
I'm going to invite him up on stage shortly. Uh, it's going to be here in voice because he's traveling. And for those of you that were in the audience last night, you will remember Brent said he's hosting around about 30 people, some of his top agents, some new agents up in the mountain areas with brilliant views wherever he is watching. But this amazing gentleman, I've learned so much from him in the last two to three months that I've been part of EXP Realty. And uh, Brent's going to be uh, dialing in through the EXP mobile app. And uh, I trust his voice is going to be here shortly. Very well, welcome to you, Brent. Great to have you on board. Brent, uh, you might be on silent, but we can't hear you. And I just want to make sure that you are available and uh, you can take the, a couple of questions from me. Uh, you said you would dial in on the EXP mobile app. Just double checking that you are available. Yes, I'm right here. Bill, did you unmute the mic there, Bill? Bottom left. Yeah, I did. Brent. Can you hear me? Yeah, I did. Can you hear? Can you hear Brent, Andrew? We can hear you loud and clear. Thanks very much, Brent. And uh, just to kick off this session, I mean, I've just recently heard that you've taken your network and your team. Uh, from zero four years ago to 14,000 agents some three months ago to 16,000 agents all of a sudden, surely that needs an immense amount of leadership, an immense amount of vision, and a certain mindset uh, to take you through this kind of uh, growth over the last uh, four and a bit years. Uh, yes, yes. It was a little bit hard to hear you there, but um, yeah, we've had a, a great run. And uh, we've, you know, started, and um, just real quick before I go any further, I just want to make sure you can hear me okay, Zach. We can hear you loud and clear, Brent. Thanks very much. Carry on. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So, I love technology. I'm using the EXP mobile app, pretty cool. But, uh, yes, I was uh, 12 years with Remax. Uh, I had a great career there. Then I spent eight years with Keller Williams and loved it there. And then four years ago, EXP found me, and I made the switch to EXP. You know, I thought I'd, I'd they'll love it, but it's six months. So the company was small, maybe 1,200 agents. We had a penny stock. We weren't on the NASDAQ. We weren't a multi-billion dollar international real estate company. And so uh, I got into EXP. I moved six of my buyer's agents in. I was just an agent with the team. I had, excuse me, six listing specialists and 12 buyer's agents. We all moved to EXP. They just kept selling real estate, but I kind of had a vision for, for building a company. And so I came up with a business plan. I decided when I would sell real estate. I decided when I would spend time with my family. And when I'd go out with my wife on dates twice a week. Never, I've been doing that for 20 years. Play golf every Friday. I kind of decided when to work, when to play. So I wouldn't burn out. And then I picked one day a week, Friday afternoons from 2 to 5, and I started calling 3 to 5 agents I knew in the market going, hey, what do you think of this new model, EXP? And they, they would look at it. And Andrew, to make a long story short, eight months later, I, I did a month for eight months. I enrolled 40. And if you understand you know, how you unlock all the different tiers for EXP South Africa, you have to enroll 40 agents, and then you get paid really well and that's what I did and um, you know, I was just very systematic about it very committed and just it could not have gone better but I would say this to everyone listening this is a leadership call and I would say this the speed of the leader determines the pace of the pack and I set a good speed you know you're in a marathon not a sprint at times you got a sprint for sure if you got bills to pay and then the rent's due and car payments and children to feed I have five kids I'm a football coach uh, and uh, in college and, uh, and, and basically busy life. But um, every Friday, I did ESP from 2 to 5 p.m. The rest of the day, I went on listing appointments. I worked with my team. And uh, those 40 agents that I kind of, I, I kind of treat them like listings. You know, we convince buyers to buy through us. We convince sellers to list their properties with us. And so how about convincing agents to join our company, kind of enlisting agents for your feet? So I did that 
40 times four years ago, and everyone think right now, in fact, in the chat mark, you can put down how many homes you sold four years ago, and then put down what that earns you today, like, you know, 20 homes, 30 homes, 50, 70, whatever it was. And you'll see some people put in numbers of homes they sold. And then the chat mark, put how much that earns you today. And of course, we all know that today, zero, you'll see a bunch of zeros right in the chat mark. So the return on investment is terrible. And so what I did was I simply uh, listed 40 agents. It's a one-time deal. There's a finish line to go off of it in real estate for two decades, actually 25 years, a quarter of a century, uh, 54 years old. And uh, you know what happened? After two decades, uh, every year I'd have to go relist 60 properties, and I'd, I'd sell 60 homes personally. My team would do another couple hundred. And we just had to rinse, wash, and repeat. We had to do it year after year. And that's just the way it works. Well, enter EXC, I list those 40 agents, so to speak, four years ago. And I was able to retire from actually anymore. I don't have to work with buyers anymore. I stopped working with buyers a decade ago because I realized because they're constantly pulling you away from birthdays and anniversaries and coaching soccer, football, rugby, little league, all the things we like to do with our family, uh, being at the lake, being at the river, being at the ocean. And so I, 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 you eventually become a listing agent, which is what I did. And um, basically today, uh, all I do is build a company. It's wonderful. Uh, this year I own about six million U.S. dollars. And uh, Four years ago, plus over a million dollars worth of stock, easily maybe a couple of million. million dollars is pretty good. It's my fifth year at EXP, and it's there for everybody. Nobody said I could do it. Nobody said I couldn't do it. It's really up to you. You decide. The only glass ceiling is the one you put over your head. I took it very serious. I did not miss on Fridays. It's like not missing if you're a golfer. You putt two, three hours a day, you have to become a great putter. And he said, you work out with a coach. But very much a student of life. I believe in being a student of real estate. And I very much became a student of how to build EXP. And I have a website out there called brentgo.com. And you go there, there's all kinds of videos on how to sell real estate and all kinds of training on how to do agent attraction. And like you said, Andrew, those 40 agents led to 878 year one. Well, 3,000, and the year after that, I think 6,000. Now I have over 9,000 in my seven levels <laughs> organization because I have people on my levels 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It just keeps going. So my advice to everybody as I wrap up this call, it's such a pleasure and an honor and a privilege to be with you guys. You couldn't have a better leadership team in South Africa with Andrew and the, the, the staff he's put together, the executives. I can't wait to meet everyone. I can't wait to come out. But it is to treat this very serious. And, and you're going to be a pioneer. You're going to take some arrows to the wagon. You know, right now, you're just, they're dirt roads. Today, our roads are paved and the interstate looks good, but you guys will break a few axles. But if you hang in there and you're patient, you can see South Africa is not perfect. You're in a startup, you're in a pioneering position. But everybody that came with me four years ago to, is a pretty good seller. They all have anywhere from $300,000 to over a million, million two, million three, all of them. And that was just changing where they sell their real estate. That doesn't even include the revenue share they're making. And so I have many agents who make $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 a month. I have some make $50,000, $100,000, a quarter of a million a month in revenue share. I do a lot better than that myself. But the main thing, and I'll end with this, if you want to succeed, if you want to really make it at EXP, just serve, love, care for people. Help them, help them, help them. Maybe the final question I'll leave you all with is, do the agents you're attracting the XP and do your clients, do they know that you love them? That you, I mean, that may sound cliche and trite, but I'm telling you, people can tell the difference if somebody genuinely cares about you and, and, and your clients and your agents. Satisfied clients go away. Satisfied agents, go away. You want them thrilled. So how do you do that? Bring massive value, love them, 
serve them, care for them, lay your life down for them, and you will succeed beyond your wildest dreams. I cannot wait to come up to South Africa after COVID's over and meet you all. So excited for what the future is going to look like for you guys. And that's, that's it. Have a wonderful day. Andrew, thank you for having me on today. Was that helpful? Yeah, very helpful. Thanks, Brent. I just want to ask you one very quick question, and I'm sure you can give it a, a one-minute answer, if not a little bit less. But those 40 influential agents that you initially appointed, those 40 uh, agents that were in your first tier that were influential, were they leaders? Uh, what sort of mindset did they have? Uh, can you just give us a little bit of uh, input onto those individuals, please? year and if I could 20, 30, 40, 50 a year, 60, 70 a year, I mean the, the more successful the agent, the more respect they have by the self population and community. So look for the most successful people you can find, Sherry be with them. And I got a those out of the forty, I probably had two or three that were really amazing, owned franchises and sold them, another two or three that were general managers and they quit their job to do EXP and went full-time. Um, probably all together, maybe 10 out of the 40 were, were pretty pretty good. And then a lot of other people were just selling 10 to be home a year. <laughs> Brent, it's broken up there. We'll answer home to you. Can you hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you. Okay, so anyways, um, so yeah. The more influential the people you talk to, the better you will do. I made a video called The Model Explained South Africa. I'm not sure what the domain name is. It. I'm sure Andrew has that. He can get it to you guys. But it's called The Model Explained South Africa. It's just something that's 25 minutes long that you guys can use immediately. And then, of course, you'll make your own. Somebody with that cool South African accent can make their own. Uh, but I made a tool just to kind of get you guys going. It actually turned out pretty good. I've got to run. Thank you for having me on, Andrew. It's a pleasure and an honor. Brent, travel safely and uh, all the best to your destination and look after those 30 people that you're with over the weekend. Thank you very much indeed. Have a great weekend. Thanks very much, Brent. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks, Brent. Cheers, man. Here we are. Well, that was Brent Gove, and most certainly, you know, what I've learned from Brent over the last number of months is certainly identify those influential people for your first tier. And on revenue share, the rest of the tiers will then work, and uh, the agents uh, building in your network will build rapidly. And uh, there's no reason why you can't be a Brent Gove, or you can't be similar to Brent Gove in terms of building your own networks, whether in South Africa or abroad, I see Adam Days in the audience from the UK. Welcome, Adam. Great to have you here. And so wonderful to have so many different people from all over the world uh, in the audience this evening here in South Africa. So without further ado, I'd love to invite up on stage uh, uh, a real gentleman, Stephen Johnson. Steve, pop up on stage. Come join us here. I just want to have a very brief chat with you around uh, what you do, what you're up to at the present moment. I must say you're promoting our brand EXP South Africa so well in South Africa. What do you actually do, Steve? Tell us about it. Um, Andrew, first of all, thank you so much for having me and a huge thank you to you and the Super 7. You guys are doing an amazing job. Like, like Brent said, these are early days and uh, we're pioneering something great. We're so grateful to all the work that you guys are doing. So thank you so much. Um, Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Yeah, so, so Andrew, I run a, a real estate training business, um, and I have done for many years. And um, yeah, I really wasn't looking for an opportunity. In fact, I promised that I would, I would <laughs> never ever, you know, nail my colors to the mast of a, of a, a single real estate business because um, my training, obviously, my, my income was from diverse companies in South Africa. But when EXP came along, to me, it was just uh, an absolute no-brainer. And, and uh, Steve, just on that, what sort of attracted you to, to EXP? I mean, what was the real draw card in terms of saying, okay, EXP is for me and this is where I want to go? I think it was a combination of things, Andrew. So I ran a, a, a real estate training business uh, 20 years ago from 2003 to 2009. I worked my tail off. And I mean, in those days, there was no 
uh, you know, there was no Zoom. Forget about like online EXP world. There wasn't even Zoom or anything like that. If you wanted to train, you had to get in a car, you had to get on an airplane, you had to travel. So I just traveled the country and I worked incredibly hard for six or seven years, uh, built up the business, having brought it here from the States. I was working with a guy called Brian Buffini. Some of you will know Brian and uh, built Providence in South Africa. But you know, after seven years, uh, we had like 14 staff members. We were coaching hundreds and hundreds of agents through the country. I was always on airplanes, always in, in cars. 2009 hit, 2008, 2009. Those of you in real estate back then, you'll remember what it was like. And, you know, everything we'd worked for just collapsed. It was, we were doing well as a business, but then I learned the hard way that it, uh, it, it was a cyclical business. And so um, actually lost the business in 2009 and uh, it kind of rebuilt and went back to varsity. I did a master's degree, did, did a few other things for five or six years. And then four or five years ago, got back into real estate training. But this time I said, you know, I'm going to go online. Uh, I, I don't want staff. I don't want offices. And the technology is here for me to sell on webinars and to, and to put my, my training on video. But even in the current training business where there's virtually no expenses, it's a great business and it's a profitable business. But Andrew, you'll know this, it's, it's cyclical. Whether you're a service provider to the real estate industry or whether you're an estate agent yourself, it is cyclical. And I just felt like no matter how hard I work, I, can, I could only do so well and I couldn't prepare enough for the future. I was like on this hamster wheel that I just, I knew at some point was just going to stop. And when I saw EXP, um, I mean, there were a number of factors which combined that made it uh, that made it attractive to me. But one of them was was the incredible potential to take a group of people on a journey with me as we all got off the hamster wheel together. This has the the, the potential to set you free financially. I've and got goosebumps. Yeah, that did not escape me. You know, I, Bill Campbell, my sponsor, I'm very grateful to him for reaching out to me from Canada. And the moment I saw it, I kept a cool face. But Bill, you need to know that the moment I saw it, I knew this thing, I'm going to do it. It has got the potential to set me free and not just me, but to take a group of people with me and go on a journey together. So I think, uh, I mean, there's more I could say, Andrew, but that really was the, the heart of it. Yeah, Steve, I, I really appreciate the, the way you've put it across. And I, I think your professional manner, uh, you can see Steve on, 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 uh, on Facebook, on websites, on LinkedIn, and you can see he's always extremely professional in terms of his overall approach. So hats off to you. And, you know, I thought when you were talking, uh, what really attracted me to EXP was around the honesty, the genuineness of the people, the integrity of this organization. With it being registered uh, on the on the Nasdaq as EXPI, it's a, it's so important in terms of all of us being accurate in terms of our messages going out there. And uh, I say it again, Stephen, uh, your audience that you've attracted, the people in the room here this evening, uh, there are a lot of your colleagues, a lot of agents that you've introduced. Uh, well done to you, and uh, certainly you're leading the charge. And as one of our early agents. Uh, we as a team are so appreciative of you and uh, the manner that you, you're spreading the word in South Africa and we haven't even started marketing yet. So the exciting times are coming up and cert certainly lying ahead. Steve, do please stay on stage. Um, I'm, I'm going to just ask uh, if uh, uh, Lance Klusner could step up on stage and uh, uh, I know Lance, you're going to make your way up here. As you're making your way up, I'll do a brief introduction. And we did talk about you a little bit earlier and uh, uh, what an incredible journey you've had, Lance. Um, I, I, th I, th I think, you know, if, if, if we look at you in the manner and the way that you've uh, been an ambassador for cricket, for sport, for South Africa, you've had an amazing journey. And uh, I, I just look back at the years and I think back to the 1999s, etc. And... Uh, uh, you are genuinely one of South Africa's best ever pinch, pinch hitters and one of the best all-rounders that South Africa's ever seen. Uh, your nickname, I do know, is Zulu. And can you maybe elaborate on that name just to, to give us a start, Lance? First of all, good evening and good evening to everybody out there and everybody in the audience. Um, let me just start by checking that uh, you can hear me pretty clearly. 
we can hear you loud and clear. All good, Lance. Thanks, Andrew, um, and, and thanks for that introduction. Um, I think I should uh, walk around you with an, in my back pocket and just let you out um, every now and again <laughs> when I'm feeling a bit down. But uh, thanks very much. Um, nickname is, is Zulu, uh, which is really the tribal language um, here in KwaZulu-Natal, where I was born and bred. Um, I had the privilege of, of playing with a West Indian fast bowler named Malcolm Marshall, who I don't think could say my surname. So um, he heard that I could speak Zulu, um, and really that's where it started. And um, yeah, it's actually worked, it's stuck, it's worked quite nicely, and uh, I must say I, I have enjoyed it. So um, that's been something that... Um, that Malcolm has left with me as well. Um, and those cricket followers out there will know that Malcolm has, has since passed away. So he was somebody that uh, was huge in my life and uh, it's nice to carry a little bit of uh, his memory uh, wherever I go as well. Yeah, Lance, such a sad loss to, to the world and to the sport of cricket, Malcolm Marshall, a legend in your sport and uh, yeah, it's someone to really remember. Just uh, as a youngster, I mean, you must have been, and, and I really think towards, we, we moving as EXP Realty into India and uh, quite an interesting country, 1.4 billion people in that country, a million agents operating in India itself. But I've always had the desire to go to Eden Gardens. And uh, I looked up on your resume and uh, just uh, went over the web a little bit. And your first test debut was at Eden Gardens the crowds there build up to 110,000 people. You've got to picture that as a as a as a a, a person outside of cricket. 110,000 people watching you in a stadium. Did you ever visualize? And I'm talking vision. Did you ever visualize yourself playing your first test in India? Andrew, no, I didn't. And just to build on 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 that a little bit, there's probably another 200,000 that couldn't get tickets to get in that would line the streets all the way to the to your hotel so it was a, a phenomenal phenomenal experience and and certainly to start one's international career in a um, really such a hallowed um, a ground was was not something that I, I could ever have thought uh, would ever happen and and for it eventually to go so well we eventually won the test match um, uh, I played a, a decent part in in that winning as well so um, no, it isn't. And, and, and sport is just one of those strange things that you, you can't go out there, you can't study for it, you can't, as a young boy, you can dream about, I guess, playing for South Africa or playing for your country, but it's not something you can study for. It kind of just happens along the way. Um, and, and really, that's what happened for me. It just kind of popped up. I'd spent four years in the military, um, got out of that, um, got into cricket, really just um topping up i guess uh for uh provincial teams um and then got opportunities from there so um yeah to cut a long story short did i ever think i'd even play cricket in india um no not at all lance and um i mean when people talk about you they regard you as quite a reserved type of person but i geez, you speak very well here up on stage i'm, I'm quite impressed uh, just um, in terms of hobbies and that, uh, just talk us through, you know, what, what, what do you love doing in life? Um, I love fish. Um, we, we're very privileged here on the East Coast to have some fantastic fishing um, right on our doorstep. So whether it's shark, shark fishing from, from the shore or uh, fishing on a jet ski, which I really enjoy, um, it's, it's either that. And in the wintertime, I try and spend as much opportunity and, and time as I can can get um, in in the bush, um, you know, just spending time out there. Um, however, um, getting back to it, to a comment you made earlier about um, being a little reserved. Yes, I was when I was a player, but let me tell you, um, get into a leadership position or get into coaching, and um, you know, you really got to put yourself out there. You know, you've really got to give back and, and, and develop. And it's something that uh, I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed being able to, to give back and, and help other people um, kind of uh, realize their visions and, and their childhood dreams as well. 
quite amazing, Lance. I mean, uh, Brent Gove raised it earlier, talking about loving and caring, and it seems to come through in your voice now, just, you know, saying caring for the players and, and showing concern and uh, helping others. Uh, it's a trait, uh, it's a very good trait for people to, to have. You've started the onboarding process with EXP. Uh, we're certainly extremely proud to have you as part of our team. We know you're going to be very influential in India in particular, but you are coaching uh, Afghanistan at the moment. How do you go setting about your sort of vision or how do you set out the roles for your team in terms of structure? Because you must have an administrative role. There must be a, a management role, coaching, which is your role effectively, and you've got the captain. Is it laid out for you uh, up front or how do you go about it in terms of getting these structures in place to ensure that leadership understand each other, that there is in fact a vision and, uh, you know, obviously there's a mindset from your side as to how you operate with the team. Just a little bit of input there. Thanks, Andrew. That's a great question. Um, it is extremely difficult. Um, um, we don't spend a lot of time in, in Kabul, um, extremely dangerous there at the moment um, anyway. So most of our, most of our, our playing is out of India, um, out of Dubai. Um, but it is difficult and there are language uh, barriers as well but um you know i must say we've we, we've got a great uh, working relationship and you know the ceo plays a, a very big part in that uh, we've got an extremely good manager the captain as you mentioned and i've got a fantastic um, assistant coach who's also south african um who who really makes the wheels turn for me um he allows me uh to focus on uh what i need to focus and and um he makes sure that uh all the other stuff in the background that that the wheels turn and and he's been fantastic for me and extremely privileged to have had the opportunity to take him along with me um but you know one of my very big um things in coaching is to make sure that i get to know the players um, I spend time with them individually. Um, I, I want to know how many children they've got. I want to know where they stay. I want to know where they learned their cricket. Um, and uh, needless to say, the stories coming out of um, players from Afghanistan is, um, you know, that could be a book on itself. But uh, yes, uh, for me, just important, just really get to know, get to know the people. And, um, you know, as Brent also uh, touched on earlier, um, it's something that uh, he's paid a lot of attention to as well. 100%. So, you know, I think you touched on it now, you know, life is all about relationships. And I think you spot on there, Lance, just in terms of really understanding the families. And um, I've come through the hotel business. And what I learned through the hotel business, exactly what you've just mentioned now, was understanding your customer's customer. So in the hotels, our customer was really the lady and gentleman that checked into the hotel, but the customer's customer was that child that came with the parents through to the hotel. And if we understood that child's needs, effectively we'd understand our customer's customer. And I think even in real estate, if you adopt that, it's something that's extremely important in life in terms of the building of our relationships and uh, building a commun community around us where we influence parents and we influence their children. And it's the positive nature that we have on those people and the rub off that is extremely important in, in that regard. I'm going to bring in uh, Steve shortly, but just one last question to you uh, for now, Lance. Uh, we will get into one or two others, but um, I, I, I believe you had a, an in incredible discussion with one of our major leaders here in South Africa, Nelson Mandela, many years ago, and you had a personal call from him. Uh, and I just wanted to ask, uh, what sort of prompted that call and what made Nelson Mandela call you personally because you thought at the time that it could be a bit of a joke? Yeah, I've had the privilege of actually many calls from from um, Madiba. We kind of uh, met way back in 1996 um, and we kind of just headed off together. Um, he could speak uh, the language from next door really, which is Tosa. Um, and I speak fluent Zulu, so the languages are, are very close. So uh, we had often just headed off in our own languages and, um, you know, just spend some 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 quality time together. Um, and he would call. 
I'd needed to do well first before he called, that's for sure. Um, but often just get a, a, a message from his secretary and, and say that uh, he wanted to have a chat. And um, I remember Bill called me on his, um, on his 82nd birthday. Um, we'd happened to play Australia. I scored 81 runs. We didn't win the game, but uh, he had called me and 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 still said, uh, you know, in his in his voice, uh, well, uh, I uh, definitely got uh, one ahead of you. I am 82. Uh, you only <laughs> scored 81. Uh, so um, he, he he had a fantastic sense of humour, and um, uh, we had a, a a very a very good comedian in South Africa who could imitate him way better than than I can. Um, but I always knew I could uh, catch him out if I suddenly started to to speak Zulu. So um, as soon as uh, Madiba would call, it would be straight into Zulu and for so just to make sure that it wasn't a hoax call. <laughs> Yeah, it was quite amazing. I was at, I uh, used to work at the Alangani Hotel here in Durban, and uh, we had the pleasure, I had the pleasure of hosting Nelson Mandela over a three day period. Anyway, I was the only person permitted to serve him as a young manager in the hotel, and uh, he had a doctor to check his food, he had a food taster to taste his food, and then only then was I allowed to carry the tray through to uh, the then His Excellency, the President Nelson Mandela. And uh, Lance, Steve, I said, to, I said to Nelson Mandela on his last day, because there was no, no doctor anymore, there was no food taster, he became quite acquainted with us. And uh, I went through to him and I, he loves his tea. And I said to President Nelson Mandela, I said, uh, Mr. Mandela, Your Excellency, can I offer you another cup of tea? And in his own words, he said, ah, Andrew, don't be silly, it makes me want to wee. Eh? And that was in his in, in his own language at that particular time. What a great gentleman and uh, just loved being around him. He had a tremendous aura, quite incredible. Um, Steve, just coming back to you. And, yeah, we are uh, very, very privileged. Absolutely. Incredible leader and uh, amazing qualities. Uh, really fantastic. Um, just coming back to you, Steve, um, just, um, you know, Obviously, with leaders and uh, daily training of agents and in the, in the way that you're operating at the moment, some of the messages must be quite daunting to a certain extent, but you seem to have got on top of it very quickly in terms of spreading the message about EXP Realty and about EXP coming to South Africa. In terms of your own mindset on a day-to-day -day basis, how, how do you go about your day-to-day? -day? Uh, what is your mindset? Because you, you energize, you, you're enthusiastic, uh, you, you do all these things and you're attracting a tremendous audience. Talk to us about an agent's mindset on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, thanks, Andrew, and thank you, Lance. Um, that was fantastic. Yeah, um, Andrew, it's tough because I've, I've got an enormous amount of uh, freedom, actually, which my, my business allows me. And so I realize I'm in a privileged position where I could probably give more of, of every day to uh, promoting the EXP business than most agents will. But I think what Brent said earlier was very, very good. He said he, he had a very structured approach to his, his EXP business. He was still running a conventional real estate company and doing that very well but he just gave two or three hours a week on a Friday and it was between, I think he said two and five and he would call, uh, I've heard him say it's between sort of five and seven agents. He would make sure you'd call every week. And, and I think that's the mindset. You, you've got to have a goal and, and you've got to stick to that goal. Um, so he also said as, as, as the leader, everyone follows at the pace that you lead. So I've got a, a much bigger goal than that of people that I've got to phone every week and we do a, a weekly webinar on a Wednesday and I've got a goal of, of having 20 people on that every week and I'm sticking to that goal and if it kills me, I'll make the calls I, um, and I'm focused on it. And I just think that if you, if you keep that up, um, it compounds over time and people will start to duplicate it uh, in your organization and that's where the power is. Fantastic, Steve. And, um, you know, just, just, just from our side and just uh, discussing that, you, you know, you mentioned Bill Campbell earlier in the audience. Uh, Bill is also my sponsor here locally in South Africa. And thanks very much again to Bill for the introduction to EXP Realty. Uh, it's certainly an honor for me to be part of this team. 
but Steve, you, you, you've got a huge belief in a mentor mentee type of relationship. And uh, it's, it's a, it's a strength that you've got because you believe in other people, those kind of relationships, how do you go about them? And what do you look to your mentor for? Well, I think Andrew, um, I think a huge mind shift of, of, of some agents coming into EXP is, is going to have to be to begin to think like you are describing to being to, to begin to think like leaders. So I mean, Lance just said, like he, he, he gets to know his players. That's a, such an incredible statement. Like he wants to know how many kids they've got. He wants to know about their lives. And and if there's one Amazing. thing I've learned about um, influencing, I mean, leadership is influence. That's what it is. It's influence. And you're not going to influence people unless they know you, you care about them. And so, you know, while we do live in a, in a high tech world and you can throw YouTube videos and you can get people onto webinars and all of that, um, I'm reminding myself and I would remind everybody else that it's, it's actually the one on one conversations you have. It's connecting with people individually. It's taking people on a journey with you. And as your, your group in EXP grows, um, you know, from a training perspective, you know, never, never look at the, the, the EXP training schedule and think, oh, that's going to be an awesome session on social media marketing or whatever. I mean, we got the best trainers in the world in EXP that are doing stuff every day. Don't look at a session and think, wow, I'm going to attend that. You know, you maybe for the first time in your career, even if you've got three or four people in your in your network below you, you know, take someone with you. Don't do anything alone. Uh, always think, who can Brilliant. I take? Who can I take with me? So not what can I attend? What training can I attend? But what what can I attend? And who can I take with me? Who else will benefit from this? And it's that just personal phone calls and 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 you know, um, taking an interest in, in taking people with you. I think that's what's going to build um, successful businesses here. No, well done, Steve. I think you're going to be a tremendous mentor in South Africa. I've already said that. And uh, so looking forward to to working with you. Just a question to Lance quickly. Uh, Lance, um, I think Hansi Cronier must have been a great captain and uh, you must have spent some time with him. Uh, I certainly loved him. I know when he passed on here in South Africa, my mom was in tears. She was an avid sports lover uh, because her dad was a Springback rugby player. Uh, but certainly I must uh, say, Hansi Cronier, great le leader, good vision, great mindset. You got comments on that, Lance? Yeah, spot on. Um, he was somebody um, who kind of set the example um, for us, pretty much whether we were whether we were training, whether we were playing, um, and whether we were just out at out at dinner, or whatever it is. Um, he was somebody that uh, um, his door was always open. He knew, um, you know, as 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 we've all touched on, I, I guess earlier, and Stephen just touched on it now it was um, was that uh, he he knew. He basically knew our mom and dad's names, really, um, and 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 that's that's the the care, and, and you sort of felt, you know, you, you'd run through a brick wall with him because he was somebody that 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 cared extremely deeply about you, um, and it's yeah, you know, just a extremely sad, sad story, um, the Hansi Cronier story, but uh, um, and just from from the inside, you know, he would always be leading the fitness, um, he would always be leading the conversation. Um, but at the same time, really keen to hear what um, us youngsters would would, uh, would say because way back then we were we were youngsters and uh, we we had ideas. But he would encourage us to 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 share and um, would never say, okay, well that's that's not a great idea. Would always take stuff on board. So um, that for, for me was uh, was was outstanding. And I mean, even up until today, I, I use some of those lessons that. Uh, that I've learned from from him. So, yeah, a great man and, and just a terribly sad story. Yeah, terribly sad story, but he was a great believer and uh, still believe he was one of the best leaders in South African cricket and a great loss to the sport. Um, just from my side, a, a very big thank you to Stephen Johnston. Uh, you've given us some really great ideas. A big thank you to Brent Gove, even though he was on the road, he made time for us to get a strong message about how you build a network to 16,000 agents and earn huge sums of money on a month to month basis and uh, end up having a lifestyle worth living and uh, hats off to Brent. Uh, I certainly look up to him. Thanks for the introduction to him, Bill Campbell. Uh, it's certainly been 
uh, really awe-inspiring in terms of learning from Brent on a day-to-day -day basis. Do you have some time constraints? Uh, as we do know, there's another session directly after this. But from our side, uh, Lance, great to have you on board with us as part of EXP South Africa. We're certainly going to exploit the opportunity. We love you as one of our investors. Look, looking forward to hopefully doing some golf with you at some stage. I know there's a golf day coming up uh, during December out at Sambiti. We'd love to invite you to that and uh, fly our flag of EXP South Africa. And uh, once again, thank you for making the time uh, to be part of this team, part of this panel. And uh, I've certainly enjoyed this evening's session. Uh, I'm not 